game. So this will be a game for the money. This will be a run back from winners uh, from winners semis. And it is for a little, a little yep. bit of extra stakes. And yeah, let's let's keep in mind that the first time these two faced off against each other, it was 3-0. It was honestly pretty brutal from Ray. Now, we have seen Dark Falcon have up the chance to get some life breathed back into him with that uh with that really solid win over uh Slade, but you know, this is the demon that knocked him in to begin with. And already though, starting off pretty good. 46% is all he's taken, whereas Topian Way at 83. And we're seeing actually some long distance play now between these two. They do have projectiles that can reach basically across the entire stage. So let's see how, in fact, this will play out. Okay, looking for a huge... In the, the, what even happened right there? I've lost track of all these projectiles. <laughs> the grenade that Ray spawned blew up on Dark Falcon as he was in free fall. So the hard punish... It got just lost to the wind, and he ended up dying for it effectively. So it's uh, fortunate for Dark Falcon, and it's kind of one of those we take those kind of moments because now you're Belmont with the no, lead and can start thriving. Oh, yeah, 100% totally. calculated. Just he took a risk knowing that he would. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> uh, anyway, Utopian Ray already out of 51%, and he's having to make this comeback happen takes the stock but he's already down by quite a bit and remember that we were saying earlier on in the bracket you know how utopian ray once he gets that stock lead he just becomes what demon i very very rarely see players make comebacks at all against this player uh and right now at the very least if you're dark horse you don't have to worry about the comeback no. now you do uh oh that trying to fast fall past the ledge and that ends up backfiring brutally. Now Utopian Ray is the one with the massive lead here. Only 84% and he's starting to play to it. Tiny little projectiles here and there. Big Wonder Wings coming out in the middle of it. Just it feels like Dark Horse doesn't know what to expect, whether it's a tiny little nick or a fist to the face. 64% and growing. He's barely touched Utopian Ray. Utopian Ray doesn't have any more Wonder Wings. He's gonna... Oh, never mind. He does. Enough to put him into the blast zone. Super. Okay. Uh... Utopian Ray does that. That's just... It's a it's an occupational hazard of playing the way he does. But... I, oh, okay. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that so hard. But it's like... Well, for starters, amazing come... It's really solid start to a comeback for Dark Falcon at this point. But when Ray has the lead, suddenly Wonder Wing becomes an offensive option, which ignores all of the set play that Dark Falcon has been trying to do. So he has to keep that in his back pocket on top of just watching out for Ray himself and the amount of threat that the surprisingly strong and disjointed Kazooie does showcase. Still solid start from Dark Falcon at this point. I mean, there's... A lot of ready to go. All right, 120 here. And now in the last hit situation, back air. I don't know if he has a jump or not. It does not matter. Going deep with the neutral. Air, that's something we did see earlier on in the first set. Is that Utopian Ray, if he was taking felt like he had the room to really commit to it he would go deep he would absolutely follow through and just push him off stage ending some stocks incredibly early so as we see right here yeah going deep in actually let's let's take a nice he slow gander there yeah he air dodged meaning Which that he had he, no more defensive yeah. option if he even if he did have his jump he there was nothing he could do about my adv slow advance forward into the yeah yeah <laughs> right right we can okay this all right learning <laughs> moving in game two here all right i mean it kind of it's game five between these two but game two for this set here utopian ray taking all right both of these guys just giving a hefty chunk of damage to each other right at the start. A bit of an aggressive Wonder Wing at the corner. In the end, Dark Falcon doesn't end up taking that much damage for it, but now, once more with stage control, we have Utopian Ray setting up these walls of projectiles, trying to go for a cheeky early kill, possibly with that up B, but doesn't actually find it, and now Utopian Ray is 
Oh, actually overextending, getting into his face, jumps into an axe. He's now at 114. Wonder Wing pushes through that wall, putting him once again with a little bit of stage control here, but... How is he actually going to take a stock at this point? Oh, it's going to be Dark Falcon with an amazing conversion. It really kind of makes you wonder. And thankfully, online has resources that where you can still like keep playing even if you are, uh, you know, waiting. But it makes you wonder that like Ray is not looking nearly as dominant so this could be a mixture of just dark falcon being a little bit more prepared and just being more warmed up with some of these like incredible cross setups after coming off of a tight game five victory and ray is content to just try and play a similar game plan as to four which works for game one but may not may not work as effectively in later games as, we, as dark falcon seems to be entirely in control of the pace of the game that being said, it is still even here. Dark Falcon with a little bit of stage control. <laughs> That's actually quite a bit of stage control. Banjo forced to use his second to last, the penultimate uh, Wonder Wing. And now, oh, just having Wonder Wing is... Oh, no, he's... He can still recover. He's probably going to have to... Yeah, but now no more Wonder Wings available, meaning that he's going to be able to throw out more projectiles a lot more freely. Although it seems that actually, all of a sudden, Utopian Ray playing around that, getting in his face, throwing out these quick tilts, going just outside of his range and hitting him with egg after egg. Oh, what a beautiful read right there. After that mistech, charges the down smash, covering three of the four options. And that's going to be it for that... Second stock on Utopian Ray. He's going to have to mount this comeback somehow. Mistimes the forward smash right there. Despite neutral get being in his face, Dark Falcon is fine at the moment, at least. Starting to possibly get some damage for himself. These projectiles one after another. The aerials putting him way off stage here. And uh, <laughs> there's a, it's just a flurry. It's it, There's always another one. But point blank Wonder Wing... Oh, committing! I love it! Going super deep. Definitely Dark Horse was not expecting it. But at this point, 120% onto Utopian Ray. He has to be so careful. Definitely Dark Horse has kill power available to him. And if Banjo is not careful, he can get caught by just a tiny little move. Gets his opening started, though. Perhaps an edge guard might mean victory. Knowing that, he's looking for a grab, but... Oh, he's still alive here, actually. Looking for the opening to get back. But he's still not quite there just yet. Back here to reverse. Can he get anything more off of it? That's going to be a grab. Back throw. Knowing that getting him off stage is going to be key. Forward smash could have done it if it connected, but not quite. We do have 159%. 165, but he is alive nonetheless. Two more Wonder Wings available to him. A Wonder Wing in the right stage positioning might actually mean the stock here. He might have to Wonder Wing to make it back, though. No, instead, he's going to be using the platforms. Oh, in the end, air dodges into an axe at the very end. He wanted to preserve his Wonder Wing so badly, but... And maybe he was trying to get on those platforms as they were coming out. But, uh... In the end, he just spent too much time off stage and lost his... Uh, yeah. He was forced into air dodging there. God, the, the use of this first double jump... Uh... I mean, I, it's not here. This is where he gets caught by the axe. But they used the first double jump, like he used. Like we're gonna, we're gonna see the grenade blow up. Oh, he, yeah, he's still like, he's still like mad life, But bounces again. He's first jump goes that way. Second one goes that way, which just like if you're already indecisive in your angle, then Belmont's gonna blow you up. Uh, and Dark Falcon just didn't need to overcomplicate it. And that's where I think the real power of that game two really was, with the exception of early game, which started off in a little bit in, uh, a little bit more even, a little bit in Ray's favor. Uh, Dark Falcon stopped trying to overcomplicate some of his neutral, some of his punish games. He's just like, okay, I know my items will flat out beat yours. I know Cross is just so devastating in this matchup. So why am I trying to do too much here? I can just play my game and play it well. That's, it's really what has showcased and really what let him completely control that game too. If Ray could counter adapt, that's just because he's such a good player. But right now, Dark Falcon really feels like he's warmed up and ready to ready to go.
Oh, great job there. Catching him with the Wonder Wing. That's 86% onto Dark Falcon. At this point, oh, just I like that forward throw. Just putting him at the ledge. So far, Utopian Ray, it felt like at the beginning he was struggling to really get damage off of these ledge traps. But now they seem to be coming through for him. But oh, so many projectiles. He just cannot weave his way in between all of them. Right as I say that, though, just runs right past forward smash in the other direction. That is a massive, massive stock for Utopian Ray. This is the first time I've seen him with a substantial lead in quite a while. But the question is, can he actually do anything with it? He once again has to face down this barrage of projectiles. The axes are a kill threat all on their own. And these other ones also can threaten off of a conversion. Oh, going for that Wonder Wing to just try and close the gap. But... At this point, he needs to use that. I think it might have been his last one to just make it to the ledge. Yeah, but that huge parry, oh my lord. Ray finding ways to prolong stocks is what keeps him in these games, which might be from just matchup familiarity, from like character uh, character understanding and knowing his own limits. But Ray holding on to, uh, to stocks like this lets him find huge leads, big setups, and absolutely ways to gain kills like if you're dying at 208 you're feeling good oh he does it again i will spit out my water <laughs> oh no is he gone no what happened i uh, okay i mean it's but even I, now although he did have to burn wonder wing but if you're ray i'm not even i guess he just happened to go past the ledge with a down air but anyway, we can probably get a look at that on the replay. Nonetheless, we do have a last stock between these two players. I mean, look at this at the moment. 41% onto Utopian Ray when he had such a massive lead before. But, oh, starting to get that lead back. A nice combo ending in a Wonder Wing. Another Wonder Wing. But, oh, the hit lag from connecting actually gives him the time to shield. And now, oh, now Utopian Ray opting to use that platform for his recovery. He has to dodge all of these projectiles. Manages to make it through with that Wonder Wing, but he only has one left. One uh -oh. after that one, it's uh, at the very least Stark Falcon can throw out projectiles a lot more freely without having to worry about that as an option. Oh, Utopian Ray trying to find his way through. And there's it. That's the last Wonder Wing, and it manages to take the stock. Utopian Ray at just about 100% managing to stay with it and takes game three. Big moments in these games usually require you to play a whole lot safer. And usually require you to like try and set yourself up for something or prepare yourself. But... What was it? What Ray, what Ray did instead of, instead of trying to sit back and always keep evading, especially after stock two, for both care for both players, just kind of happened and disappeared because, you know, shrug whatever. <laughs> especially after something like that happened, Ray kind of put his put his thinking cap on and said, "Okay, I really need to take Dark Falcon off of his spot." Because if he's allowed to sit underneath some of these platforms and really pressure me as I continuously go high, go uh, and take to the air, then he's going to bully me all day. Oh, down. Oh. So he powered, used that Wonder Wing to power right through and uh, unfortunately burning one on what looks like another in missing, but. Ray. Anyway. All right, that game, th this this game has so far started off with a little bit of a, uh, with a, uh, with a, uh, a, uh, Merch, whatever. Some schmutz on his face. But he's getting over it real quick. The nice combo with that just aerial into aerial. And now these two are neck and neck in percent. Granted, Utopian Ray only needs to take this one game, and that's going to be he's going to get his chance to get a run back against Tejus, who's right now sitting in grand finals winner's side. But it looks like Dark Falcon does not want to give it to him. 83. Per oh, look at that. That forward smash was really big, though. But Utopian Ray having to fight his way out of the corner. We see the beginnings of Wonder Wing come out, but it is intercepted by the forward air. Oh, but that one is not intercepted in times? the least. And now we have a completely even stock count here. How many times, Salty? How many times? Are we going to see Dar Falcon really try to like recover the platforms or like drop or drift kind of 
slowly, uh, lazily to ledge, and Rage is gonna blow him up for that. But his on stage game has been so good, at least. <laughs> his on stage game has been so good, but then his off stage game has been. Like, it's left some a little bit to be desired, despite him mixing up his recovery routes. A lot of the times, he just he sees platform, tries to go to it, and Ray says, uh, no. Well, that I'll... time, I think he willingly put himself on the platform and created some distance from an invincible Ray, right? Yes. I mean, like, in, explicitly in terms of, like, he was put off stage by Ray, like, not, not going from on stage to platform to try and, like, gain distance. Okay. Okay, well, in the, nonetheless, he, Dark Horse is still managing to, you know, keep his wits about him. 117% onto Ray. That factor will not be able to do just quite yet, but, oh, yeah, so far we haven't seen that many completed edge guards. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh <laughs> Names it's... are hard. <laughs> but anyway, both these guys deep in the red right now. This next hit might do it. And I mean, if you manage to if, if Ray takes this stock here, that means that then Dark Falcon will have to be Oh, as we'll see, he has to make this comeback. Okay. Just immediately dropping down and throwing out a move. You know, that's what Ray's been doing to him. 150%. He needs to find a way to actually close out this stock without taking too much damage. Another back air, but it's not enough. Utopian Ray is off stage, though. Oh, and the shield poke. I, I, what happened right there? There was an extra explosion. Was that his grenade? He had grenade in shield, and Dark Falcon said he wasn't going to interact with that. And Ray it just blew up in his face, quite literally. Like... Yeah, he do a shield poke? Is that what happened? I think so, yeah. The axe then shield poked because the grenade blew up, or Ray just saw the grenade blew up and tried to jump out of shield. Either way, it's a good spot for a Dark Falcon. It's the cross the main no. <laughs> just, just, just toss him through the fire. But, oh man, this is actually completely even right now. Another Wonder Wing, though. Those moves are they just so much damage. It puts him so far out there. Dark Falcon trying to make his way back to stage. He finally does. Does not jump into that Wonder Wing. And that means that he actually has some stage positioning. The grab's just not working out here. Another Wonder Wing trying to catch another jump. That's it. And that's going to be it, I think. Yeah, it puts himself in the corner because of it. And Dark Falcon is more than happy to punish him for doing so. There we have the pride and true holy water F smash true come. The these wonder wings. Was that a misinput? No, okay. no. Because that one that one was something that Ray had been doing quite a bit. If I'm just gonna I'm just gonna <laughs> Maybe he was just misinputting quite a bit. Because like these jump wonder wings that he does here, like he's been doing them quite a bit to try and catch these jumps, but unfortunately this time it put him on ledge. And where does a Belmont player want you? Right here. As they ignore my scribbles. Right right here. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Right, right, right there. I, I'm Thank you. I'm sorry. Could you add another few squiggles for me? <laughs> no, thanks. We're right into <laughs> game five, baby. Back to back game fives. Okay. Oh, the dash attack being really big, putting him off stage. Utopian Ray kind of being tossed around for the moment. Then just to find his first hit with just a nick of the back air. But. Yet to find a real combo starter or really meaningful damage so far. And the stage positioning, the stage control has been in Dark Falcon's hands the entire time since this match started 30 seconds ago. That's going to be two Wonder Wings expired and neither of them have connected. Utopian Ray kind of, uh, uh, I think we got the names reversed on the setup there on the display. Oh, yeah. What? There we go. A quick, a quick swap is yes. good production here. We're always, always on top of it. Uh, but Utopian Ray at 104% definitely has to be careful. Another F, like Holy Water F Smash will absolutely do him in. And at this point, well placed forward airs also being aware of this, taking to the air. But that, I love that. Just going for the grab instead. Dark Falcon in a great position at the moment. He and can't even die from an errant uh, Wonder Wing or anything like that. 
And now Utopian Ray forced to recover high. He avoids the axe just barely. Another one of those jump wonder wings that had worked out badly for him at the end of last game. But right here is another time where it seems to work. No legend invincibility, but the tiniest hit from the upbeat keeps him safe. Where are you going? That downer was meant to just hit ledge. He wasn't meant to go super far below. But I mean, credit where credit's due. Dark Falcon has really prepped his game plan to play around the aggressive Wonder Wings. He basically looks at Ray in the face and says, hey, you get five times per stock to get in on me. Otherwise, like, I'm not letting you come for it. And granted, Ray has been doing a phenomenal job trying to just reduce the times he needs them and still tack on like single hits individually here and there. But the more the Dark Falcon plays around these platforms to avoid the grounded Wonder Wings, the more that he closes down his and locks down his approaches, the more that Ray is just watching second place slip from his fingers. Oh, second place at least. And oh man, at this point, that such a brutal, brutal stock to happen to him. But he's not, I mean, Ray is, he normally has a very good mentality. Doesn't crack necessarily under pressure that easily. Granted, Wi-Fi does make that harder to do, but nonetheless, he is alive and well here. Gonna try and, oh, big damage with that forward smash. This is the sort of thing where if he can start to mount this comeback, that can actually really psych out Dark Falcon. You know, if he was in the lead, really, really in the lead, and all of a sudden now he's at a 98%. Oh, 125, that Wonder Wing almost doing him in. Granted, I think Ray wants to be preserving Wonder Wings as much as he can. This is his last stock, but a grenade to forward, there's not enough to do it quite yet. That's going to be it. A, only 53% on him. This looked like it was a cinch, a total in the bag for Dark Falcon, but with some fantastic play from Utopian Ray, he's actually keeping himself alive here. 76, 89 though. Finally, God. some stage control. That that edge guard was so clutch, but the sh the reason that the, that uh, interaction didn't end in Ray being put on ledge be was because the holy water clanged Ray's shield. It gives him just such a, a new lease on life. Not that that F smash would have killed. I don't believe so from center of town, but n what it does for Ray is instead give him this entire like this. I guess this feeling of plot armor. <laughs> is a way to put it where it's like oh man like that just like that just worked out for me i still have wonder wings on deck i can still force my way in and if he gets complacent with throwing out some of these whips and throwing out some of these holy waters that he can really die for them but particularly with this amount of rage but the air dodge oh lord and there it is utopian ray once again having almost no i think he only had one wonder wing left and he wanted to keep that as his win condition which meant that he had to be a little bit more cheeky off stage, keeping himself out there for too long, and eventually the axe found its. Zoom tight. I apologize. That was just sneeze. I mean, that's kind of what. I don't know. I can't transition off of that, but I could stuff to <laughs> Dark Falcon for covering, uh, making sure to apply the most amount of coverage with those far angled uh, axe uh, toss, uh, tosses. Uh, it's unfortunate that Game 5 did have an SD in it, but either way, the game did come down to a come down to the wire. So some just really overall, so such good plays, and, and including the, the edge guard that brought Ray back into it, and the... the... What percent did that start? He was at like 40 when he got hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's, let's see this. He gets hit by F-Tilt, Cross, He's at 46. Holy War. 88 oh, after the, the hit. grenade exploded on him. Ooh. That grenade exploding actually added the extra damage necessary that uh, he actually died. Granted, town and city, but I think you're right also. Yeah, like, but that 88% is probably just around where it'll yeah. actually kill. And I think the extra, what is it, 10 damage from um, a self-exploded grenade? Uh, I know Snake's grenade does 10. I'm not sure how much uh, Banjo's grenade does but you know what you can do 